Hello and welcome to another thrilling, exciting, magical episode of The Partial Historians. I am one of your gracious hosts, Dr. Greenfield. And I am Dr. Radness. Oh, totally rad. <laughs> so welcome. glad welcome. you could join us. I know, I'm very excited because we are knocking out a very important event today. A first for the Roman Republic of his journey we are charting. <laughs> <laughs> We're following the history of Rome from the founding of the city. So far clearer way to say it. <laughs> And in this episode, we're going to be looking at the creation of the dictator. Yes. Now, we kind of have slightly different narratives, I think, about I think this. we have very different yeah. narratives at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, I am so. following Livy's account, okay? And in Livy's account, basically, he talks about um, something we talked about last episode. Basically, how there was this conspiracy of um, Latin states and stuff against Rome which was seemingly led by Octavius Milius, who is related to the Tarquins. He's the son-in-law of Superbus. Uh, so it all seems very threatening. And this is where the Romans start to go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the solution seems to be, maybe we should create a dictator. <laughs> what is a dictator, I hear you ask? I'm excellent so question. glad you asked. <laughs> That's an excellent question. Um, the dictator tends to be quite famous uh, for all the wrong reasons yes. in Roman history. This is true. I mean, I'm sure uh, anyone, any of you who are fans of Roman history probably know that Caesar, probably most infamously, becomes uh, perpetual dictator. Yeah. Uh, much to his detriment. <laughs> much to his, uh, yeah, <laughs> leading to stabby stabbiness. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't yeah. go so well. Yeah. But it wasn't always a bad thing. <laughs> no, but... Ironically, um, we're not really far into the Republic at this stage, no. so the idea of giving somebody supreme power <laughs> does seem a little bit odd. Well, as I said, I mean, we're dealing with, you know, obviously... High levels of unrest. Yes. And also, we're dealing with a period where, you know, it's not just like someone went, Bundva, there is the Republic, it is born, it is created, perfectly formed. There is nothing more I can add to this. <laughs> Plato's ideal Republic. Yeah. Here it is. Exactly. Enjoy. We're still relatively early days, you know, and so there are going to be some, uh, there are going to be some speed bumps along the way. (laughs) I'm going to say teething issues. Yeah. That's an analogy the Romans would understand. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it does seem a bit funny that after saying we're never, ever, 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 ever going to have a king again. But in emergency, How about this cool dictator guy. In the case of emergency, <laughs> please break the emergency window and retrieve one dictator for six months. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean it's a dangerous course of action to take. One would think, um, but things are getting out of hand. The Romans aren't very happy, and there's a number of reasons for this. One yeah. of them is the escalating tension between them and all of the Latin people that happen to surround them in Italy. Really, is sort of uh, at least according to their point of view, Rome versus the world. <laughs> Well, they kind of got themselves there, so I'm not feeling heaps of sympathy for them. I'm sorry for them. But and certainly the Romans are doing nothing to help themselves. Yeah. So, like in the lead in in my narrative, before we get to the creation of the dictator, sure. we have things like the Romans stomping all over the Fidentes again. Yeah, uh, this must be like the fourth or fifth time that's happened. Yeah, um, so perhaps unsurprising that those guys are unhappy with the Romans. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of warfare going on in general. I mean, I'm, I certainly wouldn't point my finger at the Romans and say, you guys are the only ones causing trouble. <laughs> Therefore, you should go to your corner. Go to your corner and think on what you've done. But certainly, as far as our narratives are concerned, they are at war a lot. They are at war a lot. <laughs> yeah. And their friends aren't turning up to help them anymore. No. And they've managed to piss enough people off now that when they say, look, we've got this fight going on with so-and-so, can you send aid? People basically stick their fingers up at them and say... Hells no. How about no? How about no? (laughs) Even worse, some people just laugh at them at this point in time. Well, that's not good. That's really not good. Disrespect. I should slap you for that. Yeah, but we do have um, a situation with Titus Lassius Flavus. Yes. And Quintus Cloelius Siculus, who are consuls in around about 496 slash 498. Yeah, see, this is where our narrative is way out of sync. Way out of sync, man. And you're, you're getting crazy, and I <laughs> yeah, don't like yeah. it. Yeah, the crazy madness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, see, basically, as far as Livy's concerned, he does admit he's not really sure what year this all went down in. 
Okay. And that explains his lack of detail, it, doesn't it? It does, it does. <laughs> at least he's honest, unlike some people, I might say, who the might more, be just making yeah, it up. The more elaborate their account, the more suspicious I am that they're just <laughs> filling in. They're just trying to make it look like they're awesome. Anyway, I'm not going to point your fingers. Okay, yeah, Libby basically says he's not really sure. He basically says he's got this conspiracy happening. Somebody says, maybe we should have a dictator. Someone who is supreme for like six months, gets things sorted, and once the emergency's over presumably goes away again um and this is when he does he basically says that maybe some of the reason for the confusion is that nobody's sure sort of whose side everyone's on they're not sure who can be trusted they're not sure if this is a good idea if it isn't a good idea because (laughs) maybe and this is intriguing to me maybe there were people of the tarquinian faction in rome who could not well, just to put it out there, Dionysius has already flagged that baby. Um, it's unfortunately, much, it's much more mysterious. It's much more mysterious. Some of those guys are now citizens. They're no, out in the open. No, no, they're not. Nobody knows who to trust. It's very confusing. Uh, well, be that as it may. But this is where he does he does mention that maybe it maybe is this. Titus Lartus, okay, who might be might be. The first dictator. He does also say, maybe, maybe there was a rumor about Manius Valerius, the son of Marcus Valerius. Oh. But he doesn't want to go with this because he thinks that doesn't really make any sense. Why wouldn't you just go for Marcus rather than the inferior version, which is his son right now? (laughs) Well, indeed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Indeed. And in fact, uh, Dionysius of Halicarnassus offers some really good rationale for why it wouldn't be any of those guys. And of course it's Lassius. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Let me take you there. Because not only is it a problem for the Romans outside their city in terms of the fact that they are trying to do things... um, with the Latins, and that's not going so well. Yeah. Uh, but they're also having issues inside the city because obviously warfare is expensive and we've got nobody to back it up. Yes. Um, yeah. There's this whole sort of debate going on between, like, how do we deal with the with the poor and the disaffectation that the poor are facing right now? Because mm. the rich are saying, you must come to war, and the poor are like, well, when are you going to pay us for this? Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's all very well and good when it's just, you know, one month out of the year, but I can't constantly be away fighting wars. I'm poor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, that becomes an unresolved debate. Yeah. Uh, and everybody's like, not sure what we can do about that decision. Yeah. Um, maybe what we need to solve the problem right now is a dictator who can just make the poor people <laughs> do what we say. Yeah, so you know what? I actually think maybe my account is more believable. <laughs> so, you know what? Stuck on that. <laughs> Well, any in any case, yeah, uh, the dictator, we're yeah. there. Okay. It's time. Yeah, um, the Senate doesn't really know how to go about doing this because obviously they've got two it's consuls new. already. Yeah, and they're like, well, if we just choose one of the guys out of the consuls to be dictator, the other one's going to be annoyed, <laughs> possibly um, really quite angry, yeah. <laughs> possibly like. <laughs> Warfare kind uh, yeah, of angry. <laughs> possibly enough to like take it out on everybody by yeah. starting some sort of revolt. Yeah, so yeah, how yeah. do we manage this? Um, one of the oldest senators has this great idea mm. uh, in Dionysius's narrative, which is why don't we just get the two consuls together and get them to decide amongst themselves? Oh, well, that, that seems like a good idea because Romans are so humble. They're, they're far likely to say, no, you, you take it. No, 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 you take it. No, 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 you take it. <laughs> well, and so we've got Lassius and we've got Cloelius, the two consuls. Well, no, 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 you have them. Uh, <laughs> I don't have them. Uh, I, yeah. Well, I have them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, so... We're going to have to resign, yeah, and we're go- and there's going to have to be a dictator, mm. um, and this person is going to have to be chosen by the Senate and approved of by the people and invested with all the authority, mm. all the imperium, and of the state, yeah, uh, and to exercise it for no longer than six months. So they come up with the criteria around it first. That sounds like a good idea, um, and rather than just saying, "Here you go, buddy," yeah, you have the power, <laughs> and, and they take that to the plebs, and the yeah. plebs agree to that. Uh, umbrellas to them, robbing them of their own freedom and protections. <laughs> so they give the senators permission to choose somebody uh, to hold that role for the six month period. And then they're like, okay, so then the Senate gets together and they're like, what sort of man do we need as a dictator? He has to be uh, good at action. Uh, I feel like you should sing this to the Mary Poppins <laughs> song. Very good at 
action in the field and we'll fight each no. other. <laughs> no, no, I don't sing. I don't know if you've noticed, but I just don't do this. This is, it just reminds me. <laughs> At the end, just let me promise, I'll sign it up for now, okay? You, you give me the sign. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Yeah. So, he has to be vigorous in action. Uh-huh. Experienced in warfare. Right. Prudent. Mm-hmm. Self-controlled. Okay. Somebody who can govern with firmness. Ooh. Always a criteria in my book. <laughs> is it just me or is it hot in here? <laughs> <laughs> I do like firmness. <laughs> and no leniency to the disobedient. Is that the end? That's the end. Very sincerely, <laughs> Dr. G and Radness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I approve. Yeah. Muchly. Yeah. So anyway, so as far as the Senate is concerned, yeah. Titus Lassius is the standout candidate from amongst the consuls, because Cloelius is known roundabouts as a very nice guy who, while great as an administrator, perhaps not so cool in the field. Ooh. Ooh. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, but they don't tell him that. Uh, no, that's good. They break it to him gently. <laughs> well, not even that. Um, that's, this is the point where they bring the two consuls in, and they're like, so these are the sorts of qualities that the dictator has to have. You two go away and figure out which of you, you get to have it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. So this will be cute. You can choose between each other. Um, they think this is great because you know one will have to declare his colleague the best man, and the other will have to receive the compliment of being called the best man. And so everybody gets to win in this situation. Wait, wait, how are they both the best man? <laughs> because one of them is saying, you're the best man, and the implication is, I'm the best man for recognising that you're oh, the best okay. man. Oh, right. And the other one is like, I'm the best man because he said I'm the best man. That sounds <laughs> cute, isn't it? <laughs> And then we essentially get to this sort of chipmunks moment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah there's, there's, there's no other way. I mean, even my commentary on the side of this is like, no, no, after you. No, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> so it is how I imagine. <laughs> it is exactly how you imagine. Both of them decide that the other one is more worthy. Oh, God. <laughs> and they continue all day to go backwards and forwards, escalating in the... Uh, overblown compliments to each other in terms of each other's virtue. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and the rest of the Senate is there and they're just like... They're watching this? <laughs> the, Senate, the Senate is like, you've got to be kidding. Like, we just need somebody to do this. For God's sake, it's an emergency. That's what a dictator is for. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently all present in the Senate were in great perplexity. I can imagine. Uh, evening falls. Um, <laughs> the two, the, no decision has been reached. <laughs> The consuls go home to return in the morrow to figure this out. Uh, at which point, some of the senators approach last year's at home and like, dude, we really want it to be you. But could you just say that? <laughs> Please, will you do this? Yeah. And uh, last year's is like, look, guys, I can't help you. I've got to work this out with Cloelius. He's a good guy. Uh, and the next day, the Senate assembles and they're like, okay, surely we've come to some decision. Um, Cloelius surprises everybody by standing up, nominating Lassius, and then abdicating from the consulship. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I was going to say, I think I could take He's much like, more of this. I'm out, I'm tapping out, <laughs> tapping out. <laughs> Finally. So presumably you get the sense that maybe some senators also approach Cloelius and were like, you're a really nice guy. But honestly, But do nice you guys think finish last. <laughs> especially in Rome. Especially in Rome. Especially in Rome. So you've gotten this far, but you're about to come second in the race for the dictatorship. Well, see, I find this interesting because at some point or another in the office of dictator, he's meant to, the dictator is meant to um, appoint someone to help him, a oh, master yeah. of the horse. Oh, yeah. So, presumably, that hasn't happened yet because one of them could have just been consul and one of them could have been master of the horse. Because the master of the horse's job basically is just to run around doing whatever the dictator says, right? Well, actually, it gets even more complicated than that because oh, okay. the dictator <laughs> yeah. isn't necessarily the title officially right. in the beginning. Of course not. That would be <laughs> way too simple. Way too simple. Yeah. <laughs> No, no. Let me bring out the big guns. Oh, please. She just pulled out a very heavy book. <laughs> a very I'm heavy book. You. <laughs> yeah. So, the dictator, originally termed the master of the army, the Magister Populi, oh. uh, and has a subordinate who's the master of the cavalry. Right. So, your Magister Equetim. Yeah. So, that's how we get to this point of having two of them. Yeah. But it doesn't, it's not really clear in Dionysius's narrative how he gets 
a master of the horse. Yeah. But one does happen. Right. Um, and he's chosen by Lasius, and it happens to be Spurius Cassius, mm. not Cloelius. Right. Having said that... That's rough. That's really rough. <laughs> well, having said that, um, Lasius does a whole bunch of things to make sure that Cloelius is, like, kept in the fold, if you ah. like. Yeah. Not disaffected, in other words. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Because it seems like they might be friends, actually. I mean, they spend a lot of time complimenting each other. Uh, yeah, well, you would assume... I mean, obviously, he doesn't want to just stab him in the back or something, because otherwise that whole thing could have been resolved a lot quicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so... Lasius takes charge. Mm-hmm. He's like, sure, I'm the dictator. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Um, Poor people. <laughs> that guy over there, yeah. Cassius, he's my master of the horse. Yeah. Everyone's like, sweet. <laughs> um, he then orders the lictors. Oh, I love lictors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to inspire terror, apparently. Um, they, he allows them to carry the axes inside the city. Ah, see, now this is where our narratives might actually have something in common after all. Oh, jump in, please. Okay, because Livy basically says, okay, after his whole, who was the first dictator? I don't know, but I think it was Latius. <laughs> after he says that, he basically says that um, the populace of Rome see the axes being carried before Latius, and they are incredibly terrified, and therefore are made much more submissive to rule. Mm. Which seems to indicate that, yeah, maybe there is, you know, some sort of backstory going on here. It's not just about terrifying the opponents <laughs> of Rome. Although, of course, we have to remember that in Livy's narrative, there are secret dark ones everywhere, they're everywhere, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> secret <laughs> dark ones. Royalty, oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if we can speak that quietly and actually be heard in the recording. <laughs> we'll find out sooner later. Yeah. Secret Tarquins, guys. Yeah. Secret Tarquins. Yeah, so it could be that they were trying to inspire terror <laughs> into the people who might have been conspiring uh, within the city. But uh, but who knows? This is a thing. It's not made particularly clear. Well, the trouble is when the Lictors have the axes and the rods, then they can start committing... Yeah, brutality. <laughs> <laughs> they can start doing the scourging that leads to death. Ah, uh, there's nothing uh, like beating without a reason. Yes, yes, mm, kind of like, uh, kind of like if you're an African American person in America. Mm. Ooh, touche. Ooh, I don't think I want to go there. <laughs> no. I'm, not, I'm not touching that. That's way too controversial. Um, I'm not even going there. Um, bundles of rods, yeah. axes. They're walking through the city. Everybody's a little bit freaked out. Yeah. Uh, so last year's takes like the first measure. He's like, how about this? And everyone's like, whoa, dude. <laughs> That's terrifying. All right, then. They're inside the city world. Yeah, and apparently he has other symbols of royal power. Um, thanks, Dionysius, but uh, the detail, not clear. <laughs> <laughs> and this is to terrify the turbulent and the seditious. Uh, Which, again, yeah, yeah, kind of makes seem, sense. Seems yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he takes a census. Lahis does. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I can't say that I have any mem- uh, any mention of that. What I have instead is that not only are the Romans terrified at the idea that there are all these axes and stuff being carried around their city. A the whole Sabines, 24 of them. Yeah. The Sabines are like, what a dictator. Oh, my God. And because this dictator apparently has been put in place to maybe deal with them... I guess this is a mention of their hijinks with the Sabine youths and the prostitute insults. Um, they therefore decide that maybe we should enter negotiations rather than taking these guys on. Because that's a serious. They've got a dictator now. Oh, okay? wow. Yeah, exactly. So clearly, okay. clearly we need to negotiate. Um, unfortunately, the negotiations don't go super well. Um <laughs> Because, yeah, they, they, they can't quite figure out the details of what's going to happen to the young men who caused the, you know, disruption in the first place. Um, and, yeah, and it seems like maybe they want, maybe the Romans want war at this point in time. And so it seems that things are heading that way, but there isn't any actual fighting at this point in time. They, they decide to, to, to suspend the hostilities for that point in time uh, Just put a pin yeah in it. yeah, yeah. So we're gonna come back to you guys yeah. <laughs> yeah so we have this sort of play out in a relatively similar fashion in okay. Dionysius's narrative right so the Lassius takes this census and the point of that is that then he can go around and recruit men who have money who are falling through the gaps yeah into new centuries he creates four new centuries mm. um he gives one of them to himself yeah the ones that are most talented oh, thanks so much. <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> because having the lectures isn't enough, obviously. Yeah. I'm going to have everything. I'm the dictator. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the most skilled. You're with me. Exactly. He gives the second century to Cloelius. So, you know, gesture of generosity to the former consul. Now, now yes, not yes. sure what you are. Wise move, wise yep, move, yep. keeping us out. You guy, yep. you can have one. Mm-hmm. Um, he gives the third one to his master of the horse, mm-hmm. Cassius. Yep. And he gives the fourth one to his brother, Spurious. Ooh. Yeah. A bit of nepotism. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to be dictated, might as well back it up. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Got six months to go. Got to have people you can trust. <laughs> there are secret dark ones everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. The secret talk. Um, and then he takes all of these guys out to the field and he establishes three camps. He's mm-hmm. like, we've got to deal with this Latin situation. Um, ah, so back there, are we? Yeah, yeah. And okay. he's interested in strengthening his own position. Right. Weakening the enemy. Fair enough. Bringing the war to an end without necessarily having a battle. Awesome. Because let's that face be it, yeah. the Roman has a lot of enemies right now. That's true. Um, and wants to lose the least amount of men possible. All uh, wise so, moves. Yeah, yeah, you know, it seems yeah. like legit. It seems like he is our Mary Poppins after all because he satisfies all the criteria on our list. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and yeah, so he's like, and so he enters into both secret and open negotiations with a bunch of the Latins. How confusing. Uh, <laughs> it's a two-pronged approach, okay? There's the obvious one where we send the men in and they're not in disguise. And then there's the second one where they are in disguise. <laughs> Uh, so, secret ambassadors. Yeah. yeah. So he sends men to talk to the important and powerful among the Latins mm-hmm. um, to establish friendship, uh, to start to open the paths of negotiation with the people who actually hold power. Well, yeah, the Latin people. That would make sense. And then yeah. he also sends openly ambassadors to various Latin cities. Turning up at the door, standing like, guys, we're from Rome, we're really sorry. Um, can we talk? <laughs> well, what's all this trouble of creating the dictatorship? <laughs> yeah. And it seems like a reasonable move because the powerful aren't necessarily the people who are the front line in the public world necessarily. So, yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, usually there's a there's a little bit of a correlation. Sure. But, yeah. Um, not necessarily. There may be some people you can reach who you might not be able to reach otherwise mm-hmm. um, with secret negotiations. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of this leads to a whole bunch of sort of delays, backwards and forwardsing. Um, some Latins sort of take the the sort of the pause and negotiation time to like launch a sneak attack uh, on the ring. Yep, oh. which Cloelius puts down. <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> Captures all the Latins, <laughs> but importantly, in terms of um, Dionysius's construction of Lasius as the ideal dictator, yeah, it's important because Lasius takes all of the captured Latins in from this escapade, restores them to health, befriends them, and then sends them back to the Latins with no punishment well, whatsoever. He's just a Disney prince. <laughs> Oh my god. It's hard to see how the (laughs) anti-tangership eventually became unpopular. Look, I'm hoping he's good looking because then he is all mine. (laughs) Um, But so Lassius Mercy wins over a whole bunch of these Latins Mm. and this leads to the truce. Wow. Yes. And I think on that note... Yeah, well... That's that's the time to leave it. I can tell you right now... Lassius has totally done his job. in completely the opposite direction (laughs) in that Libby's got me facing down the barrel of a very serious war. Look, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's going to be a war. <laughs> yeah, but just for now. But yeah, for no, now. There's, there's no truce. There's, there's only a truce with the Sabines. <laughs> <in my account. laughs> okay, let's wrap it up there. Next time, war with the Latins. Dun, dun, dun.